Hello, welcome to the channel, Flesh to the Father. Today, I'm going to be explaining how the boomer mindset has destroyed our world, but also the mindset that we need to restore our world. Let's get into it. Okay, so bear with me in this video. I'm just going to have a little bit of a mini rant and uh, to also make it clear, obviously, this is a generalization. Not all boomers will have the mindset. There are some who have a future thinking mindset, but this is just a generalization of that generation and how what they have done has affected the future generations and led to the mess that our world is into today. Now, the way I see the boomer mindset, it's kind of how they were brainwashed, actually, to be fair to them. And it was all you see the advertisements in, especially in America, in their era. It was all about the suburbs, building homes, going to the mall, consumer society, along with the hippie movement, you know, sex, drugs, rock and roll. It was all living for the now, chasing your own desires. And it created sort of a narcissistic, egotistical, selfish generation. Because it took uh, people away from the opposite, which is the truth, which they should have been doing, which is being selfless, you know, looking after future generations rather than yourself. You know, instead of sex, drugs, rock and roll, it's service, it's family, it's uh, purity rather than degeneracy. And instead of living for materialism, you live for purpose and spiritual meaning, uh, service to God, service to your family, service to your children, raising them with morals, purpose, and also raising the next generations with their own powers and uh, with their own responsibilities rather than to do everything for them and control them. Uh, one of the main, main reasons the world is messed up is because of the boomer politicians. If you just look at how old and decrepit they are, they refuse to relinquish power and uh, they're all corrupt. They all follow their own selfish desires. They do not think of future generations and try and build things for future generations. And if you look at someone like Donald Trump, who is, in fairness, he's the best of the boomers and he did do a good job whilst he was president, in my opinion. But even he didn't have any forward thinking. It was all about now, let's get the stock market at all time highs. Let's uh, have peace. All these things are good. But what did he do to actually help future generations? Did he think of anything outside the box? And for an example, if you look at the El Salvador president, uh, Nay Bukele, everything, he's a millennial, everything that he's doing is for service for future generations, such as he's sorting out all the gang members, but he's buying Bitcoin, to sort out the economy, his future thinking. It's not just how can I sort the economy out now? What deals can I do to get more dollars or whatever, which controls the country? He's buying up Bitcoin because he's thinking of future economy. And if Donald Trump was trying to think of helping the future generations, he would have uh, shut down the Federal Reserve, adopted Bitcoin and gold to uh, help against the money printing. Because again, this is what the boomers do. Oh, we have problems. Let's just print a load of money. Forget about the future generations. And uh, if you want an uh, ultimate example of the boomer selfishness, it was COVID. Everybody knew that this disease was, whilst it was minor bad in terms of what it could have been, if you had an Ebola, you would have had 50, 60, 70% of people dying. But we had tiny percentage of people dying. So it was, it was an extremely bad version of the flu. And uh, ultimately, it wasn't that bad. But we knew that if we shut down the economy, we would ravage future generations. And that's what the boomers chose. They chose all oh, to protect ourselves. Let's just screw up the economy for the next 10, 20, 30, 40 years so that our children and grandchildren will never really be able to retire. They're barely going to be able to afford a home and they're going to be working like slaves for the rest of their life. And it was a decision made for their own selfishness or or maybe protect my life for a few more years. You know, if I'm old, I'll be like, well, if that was the situation I'm in. I'm like, well, no way are we shutting down the economy. Even we as old people can stay away, but we need to protect the future of our children, even if it means I die and live 10 years less. So be it. We need to protect our future generations and make sure that they're not going to be completely destroyed uh, financially. And even if you see a lot of Western countries are being destroyed by the crazy amounts of immigration. And this has been caused because the financial system is so messed up these days and the fiat system is going to death. The pensions can't keep up. But because the boomers need to keep people paying into their pensions and the natives can't do it, they have to import millions of 
um, immigrants uh, or even illegal immigrants to keep up the Ponzi pension system. And the cause of this is whilst it's keeping up the Ponzi pension system, it is completely eroding the fabric and culture of our societies and our countries. So we're having all these foreign wars and stuff on the streets, all the Israel, Palestine that we shouldn't really care about in terms of this is England, this is America. We don't really care. We want to build our own countries. But we have uh, a lot of Muslims and people coming into our country rioting on the streets we have grooming gangs we have terrorism we have cultures that don't uh, integrate in our cultures so the fabric of our society is denigrating all to keep the boomers up with their pensions and keep the boomers system going and if you talk to boomers sometimes they'll even when they realize that what you're talking about makes some sense or that the world's going to hell and all they say is, oh, well, nothing we can do about it. I'll be dead by then. Or, oh, well, nothing we can really do. I'll just in enjoy my holidays every year. You know, there's no desire to fight and say, oh, damn, you're right. What can we do? Let's uh, set something up. Let's use our money to set up a mission to help. It's, oh, well, just enjoy my holidays. So they're either selfish or they're just completely blind to the struggles that young people face. Like, I'm 38 now, but I understand that... If you look at 21 year olds, any average young person, even if they have a reasonably good job as a policeman, as a nurse or as any reasonably good job, they are no way they're going to be able to afford a house because by the time they've paid off their university uh, debt and then they have to try and get a mortgage, it's just there's no chance. And then they say, oh, well, you can't afford it because you've got a new phone when it's nothing to do with that. It's because the economy has been wrecked by the boomer selfishness. And uh, when the boomers bought a house, it was three times the average wage. The person, young people trying to buy a house now, they're probably, it's probably about 10 times the average wage. So they're literally going to have to work three to four times harder as what the boomers did to afford a house. And that is not just because of the boom of selfishness, it's just a product of the fiat system that is inflationary and that over time it's going to devalue. And that's why Bitcoin or something along the lines of Bitcoin is the future because there's a limited supply. So governments can't keep printing and devalue the currency. And Bitcoin actually is a deflationary asset. So if boomers really cared, they would have a worldwide mission to integrate Bitcoin as a uh, either a new economy or as a central bank digital currency backed by Bitcoin with limited supply so that governments can't keep uh, deflating our currency. And under that system, it would actually be able to have mortgages interest free because it's actually usury is actually a sin. So when banks uh, lend out mortgages and charge you interest, that's actually a sin. And uh, we could come up, we've got the brains, we could have people come up with a new financial system, I'm sure, that could not have usury. And so, for example, if you want to have a mortgage and you end up paying 1500 because you're paying, or 2000 let's say you're paying $2,000, you're paying a £1,000 mortgage, but you're also paying a £1,000 interest. If we made the usury illegal and had a new financial system, you'd only be paying a £1,000 uh, to pay off your actual mortgage and you wouldn't have the usury part. So immediately you'd make a system better if you uh, applied sensible laws coming up that uh, are for the future and not for the past. And the boomers knew, know this, but because they're selfish and they are stuck in their own system, they refuse to integrate these new systems that are beneficial. So they will fight. So for it just has the US will fight to keep their dollar hegemony because it gives them power even if a new system comes up that's better they will fight and even kill the likes of uh, Gaddafi to protect their own financial system and that's the boomer mentality anything that's coming along that's going to be better for future generations or service to a different type of people they will fight to the death to protect their own needs and if you think about it, the ultimate goal would be respecting all people and uh, people having their rights to uh, protect their own needs but also understand who can work for the better for the global good rather than each individual's selfishness. And also, if you notice, the goal of the boomers is very materialistic. It's just their home, holidays and retirement. That's basically the goal of life. And even young people now, it's like, oh, yes, retirement is the goal when that's just a complete illusion. And uh, 
The goal of life is not retirement. The goal of life is to live with purpose. You know, I personally don't ever want to retire. I want to live and be of service until the day I die. You know, I couldn't think of anything worse than retiring at 50 and just having a holiday, playing golf every day, you know, boring stuff. Like they don't actually do anything of value. I want to be working, serving. I want to set a charity up and work with the charity, 50, 60, 70, 80, work. I don't want to retire. I don't want to be sat on a beach. I find it boring. Unless I have a mission and I'm thinking of things and even doing this stupid uh, little YouTube channel, at least I feel like I'm doing something and helping people. And I wake up every day with a purpose rather than uh, how we were raised. We were raised with no purpose. And it's that saying, idle time is the devil's playground. Because we've been given no purpose, what do young kids do? There's nothing else to do than sit around playing computer games or go out, smoke, uh, be sexually promiscuous, do drugs. There's You just get caught up in nonsense because we're given no purpose, no meaning. So we have to escape the purposeless life that's been given to us by just, uh, you know, as I say, playing the computer games, obsessing over sports, and then you get into gambling and drinking and uh, promiscuous behavior rather than being in a purposeful life where you're told you have a life purpose. You're a child of God. What are you going to do to serve God? What are you going to do to uh, serve your society, serve your nation? Um, family values, you know, find a good wife, a good husband, have kids, um, find a good job, work hard, all these things. But instead of that, we're taught to be selfish and uh, follow selfish desires. And that's a frustration I have. When I look back on my youth, we were given, as a generation, we were given nothing of any purpose and value, no wisdom taught to us. And uh, I think I woke up when I was like 23, so I spent 15 years waking up. And I kind of feel like what I've learned in these 15 years are what I should have learned from six years old to 21 years old. So it's like most people of my generation and uh, anybody from like 35 to even 50 years old, it's like they're overgrown children. And that includes myself. I've had to really grow up over the last 10, 15 years, but most of my generation, what, yeah, 40, 50 years old, and they're still obsessed over sports, you know, computer games. They don't have any meaning and purpose. It's all materialism. Even like Snoop Dogg, you know, he's 55 years old or whatever. And he's like, yeah, man, I smoke weed. I'm cool. I'm rapping. It's like, you're an old man, mate. You need to grow up. And all these old men act like 18 year old boys. And um, we're a repressed generation. And I always look back now and I honestly think if I could go back and I was 12 years old and this was allowable, I would have left school when I was 12 because all I needed to know was what I learned up till 12. I enjoyed school till I was 12. When I got to 12, it was a load of rubbish. Just basic English, basic maths, basic science, basic geography. And then I would have wanted to start at 12, any job, any job, manual job, whatever. And I could have spent 10 years saving, self-learning as I've been doing. Uh, learn to invest. And by the time I got to 25, I would have had enough money to buy a flat or a house. I could have met a suitable wife and I could be where I am now in terms of my wisdom and knowledge where I, when I was 25 or 23, for example, or 21. So the maturity I believe I have now, I could have had 15 years ago when I was 21. And that's why I try to teach young people now, if I speak to them, I try to teach them, look, there's a spiritual mission to life. Don't get caught up in materialism. And I try to encourage them, don't waste your money. Don't waste it on drinking and gambling. Learn to save and invest and uh, learn more about a new financial system. You know, don't waste your time just drinking, partying, trying to have meaningless sex. Try and find a suitable wife or husband, a godly wife or husband who has shares the same mission and, uh, Forget about religion and stupid religions. Try and find your spiritual connection to your father and live in service to your father. All these things that have purpose and meaning. If you're depressed, understand that you're depressed because we're in this stupid system. But once you awaken the spirit and find your true purpose and the true father, you'll lose this depression. And uh, you'll wake up every day, even though it's hard in this system, you'll wake up to serve a new system and try and come up with something. And that will give you hope rather than the depression of being stuck in this ridiculous system. Okay, so that's pretty much my rant over um, something I wanted to talk about, because I do think it's very interesting, it explains a lot of why we are at where we're at. And if you're a young person, 
who is struggling with life, subscribe to the channel, join my Discord. And um, this is somewhere that we can learn how to create a new world. And we're just getting started and we can work together as a community to build this new world and help people. If you're depressed, we have the keys here to uh, help you overcome depression. And, I, and as, as I say, work on a new way of life and we can build it and uh, we're just getting started. So come and join us on our mission. Okay, if you like the video, like it, comment below if you have any comments on your experience and uh, your feelings on it. Even if you're a boomer, uh, put your comments below because there's some boomers I speak to who also agree with what I'm saying and they understand uh, what's going on. Okay, and uh, subscribe for more and God bless everyone. Goodbye.